Welcome to r slash Entitled People, where we share stories from your lives about people who think the rules don't apply to them, and they should get what they want. Thank you friends for subscribing to the channel, and for so many likes. And today we have three great stories, so subscribe, hit the like button, and let's begin. The first story, Family Business Feuds, How My Uncle's Greed and Stubbornness Led to a Shop's Downfall. The second story, Losing their temper over rice is very much in the style of entitled idiots. The third story. Fired one valuable employee and lost three more as a bonus. The first story is... How my uncle screwed himself badly. I've heard people say working with family can be a great idea, and it can. But after a while it can lead to some serious problems within a family. Greed is a serious problem, and it turned my uncle to a person I can't recognize no more. Originally, my uncle was a chill man, didn't argue about much, kind and caring. I've worked in a tire shop for three years with my uncle. In the beginning, it was me, him, a mechanic he knew, and my cousin. Just the four of us, but we worked well and had little problems. But as the shop got more business and began to make my uncle attitude began to change, he started to be more aggressive about work, always rushing us to be quick and continuous work nonstop. Problem was, he decided to just relax in his office and not do anything. If it was not busy, I could understand. But we, he starts arguing with us to hurry when it got busy. When he was not doing anything, we started to have a problem. Fast forward a year, the mechanic who worked with us left to go to California. On top of that, my cousin quit as well. This peeved him off arguing with both of them, but he couldn't just stop them from leaving. Luckily, we had two new workers join us. We will call them J and C. Both were hardworking people. Things were okay for a while, but all of a sudden he just stared to be rude and get mad over little things. And when I mean little, I mean little things, such as how you sweep a room with a broom, how you cleaned a bathroom, how you talked with customers, even how you just acted in general. It would set him off and have him in your face yelling at you. Fast forward again, he ended up losing both J and C. Why? Because in J case, he didn't want to pay him for a week's pay, so J got peeved and left. You should have seen my uncle's face. He tried to talk Jay and convince him to stay, wanted his pay, but my uncle would give it to him, so he left. As for C's case, this was eight months, so before the corona came in. C was sick with the flu, but was still working that day. As the day went on, he started throwing up. Me and Jay suggested he talk to my uncle and asked if he can go early to his house to recover. A week goes by and he still hasn't showed up for work. We thought maybe the flu was hitting him hard, but it wasn't that. He quit that day. My uncle told him to and I quote, go the F home already then, and proceeded to curse him out some more. Here's my question. If your boss did the exact same thing, would you stay? My uncle had a brother who would come certain days to work so he could take off and relax. We'll call him M. M was an amazing man, hardworking, honest, and happy as could be. He was the reason I loved working there. He was full of positivity and honestly never had a problem with anyone and exact opposite of my uncle. All was well until three months later when my uncle accused his brother of stealing tires from his shop and told him to never come back. Turns out he left tires outside the night before, and they got robbed by some stranger. In this case, he would apologize to him and ask him to come back, right? Wrong. He was that stubborn he wouldn't fess up what happened, so he blamed it on his brother. I only found out because I checked the cameras and saw what happened. M was peeved but didn't argue. Why my uncle was that D stubborn? Now let me explain what happened that caused me to leave. We had a customer come in that wanted to replace his winter tires with his summer tires and rims. Simple enough, right? Well, as I just finished the last tire, the customer comes to me. Customer, thanks for changing my tires, but I feel like this back tire is a little too tight. Me, nah, that's normal when swapping rims with others. It's important to make sure it's tight and well, or else the wheel could fall off while driving. Customer, I feel it's a little too tight, so I'm going to loosen it a bit. Me. You can loosen the lug nuts, but I'm telling you, if you loosen them too much, the wheel can fall while driving. Customer. That's okay, I know what I'm doing. So he loosens the lug nuts. Ten minutes later, he calls the shop. Wheel fell off while driving. D, what a surprise, right? So he calls and says what happened. Keep in mind, he explains to my uncle the conversation between me and him. So I know I'm not in the wrong in this case. Another employee goes to put the tire back on. I'm walking towards the back to throw some trash out, and I know I'm not in the wrong in this case. I told the customer what would happen if he loosened the lug nuts and look what happened. As I'm in the back, my uncle gets in my face and starts yelling at me. Uncle, why didn't you check the tires? Me, what are you talking about? I told the customer what would happen and he didn't listen. Uncle, uh, why don't you pay attention to anything? Always got your head distracted with other things. Me, you just don't like to listen to anything, do you? F it, 
Here's an idea. I'll quit the shop and you can find someone else to work here. That's exactly what I did. I quit and went home early. Didn't give an F what he said. And now he's trying to bully my dad into telling me that I should return to work. My dad hasn't listened to him and fully supports my decision to leave the shop. In my uncle's view, he's never in the wrong and always right regardless of what happens, and that every employee he hires should be obedient. Never argue with him and never ask for sick days off. That's his view of what an employee should be in his eyes. Well, now he has no one to hire and now has lost the respect of his brothers as well as my dad. They all refuse to send workers to help him with the shop, so it's just him and another employee right now. I apologize for dragging my story on, but my uncle has done stupid things. I really don't know what I'm going to do right now, but for now I'm just relaxing and taking it easy. Oh, what a funny story about your greedy uncle. He really did his best to set himself up and is now paying the price for his pride and ignorance. He first started to change when his business began to flourish and began to press you and your co-workers to work faster and more continuously, while he himself sat in his office and relaxed. His selfish nature brought him even more problems when he lost valuable employees because his restlessness and unwillingness to pay fairly. He seemed to get away with it completely when he accused his brother of stealing tires and then couldn't admit his mistake. Very clever, considering you found evidence that it wasn't your uncle's fault. And you were quitting your job after a misunderstanding with a customer certainly gave your story a nice vengeance sound. He doesn't seem to realize that he's lost his experienced employee. So now he's trying to talk your father into getting you to come back to work. But it seems that your father is supportive of your determination to leave. This is certainly a lesson to your uncle. Never be so stubborn and uptight that you can't see your mistakes. The second story is... Fried effing rice. So I work at a fast casual Asian fusion chain. You order and pay at the front, and then a server brings your food to the corresponding table number blah blah blah. We're one of the busiest stores in the country for the chain, and when I first started working there it was a madhouse, with lines wrapping the restaurant in a two hour wait for to-go orders, and about an hour for dine-in. We once had a BOGO salad coupon and subsequently went through 100 pounds of ahi tuna a day. Needless to say, it was always effing busy. It's slowed down since then exponentially, but the first few months I worked there were insane. I was working the expo counter for dine-in with another girl, and we were doing the best we could. The restaurant was open kitchen, so the diners could easily see we had a slew of plates to try and carry out between the two of us, on top of trying to help with to-go orders. This one particular couple had been regulars, I saw them a few times a month and they were normally pretty nice, and would leave a dollar or two on a small and brisk meal. They seemingly brought the girl's parents who were a bit older. Everyone at the table but the dad had gotten their food. We take the plates out to the dining room, as they come rather than wait to bring everything out at once or in a particular order, though the small plates like egg rolls or soup typically come out first. The dad was waiting on a chicken fried rice with a very particular vegetables, and the wait for their table was nearing about half an hour, which for that night was not bad at all. We were understaffed and the dining room was packed without a quick turnover for new tables. We told him several times that we were sorry for the wait, brought him a complimentary brownie, coupons, etc. He came marching up to the counter and started screaming at my coworker and I. We were two small college girls and my coworker had already been having a bad day on top of working a double. He called us incompetent, effing skanky idiots, and started calling my coworker a crybaby bee. When she started to tear up at being verbally berated, he started demanding for his fried effing rice that should have been the first dish to come out the second we ordered. My closing manager that night, who had been cooking on the walk, whips around and looks at the guy. He's easily my favorite manager, and is a very intimidating and buff African-American guy, and he's the sweetest manager I've ever had. Him being black is relevant due to what the guy decides to say. He'll be referred to as manager, and the screaming guy will be D-head. Manager, sir, I'm gonna have to ask you not to speak to my employees like that. We've informed everyone of the long wait and they've done the best they could to keep you and your table happy. D-head. I don't have to effing listen to you. I'm a paying customer. I'll talk to whoever I want however the F I want. Manager. No you won't. Your meal is about to come out and I suggest you sit down and wait for it before I decide to kick you out of the store or call the police. D-head. You won't you stupid in. What the F's your name? Manager. It's blank now get out of the store. At this point he's taking his apron off and ready to come around the other side of the counter. D-head. Well, say goodbye to your job, blank. I'm calling corporate and you'll be effing unemployed. Manager. By all means, go right ahead. The guy storms out and his family awkwardly takes his food from us, throws it in a box and they hurry out of the store. It's been almost a year and my manager is still here, and they haven't come back. All over some effing chicken fried rice. Edit. I reminded said manager of this occasion last night, when we were closing, 
and he smirked before saying, No crazy white man will ever strike fear in me. This guy was just an idiot, scolding two harmless employees because he couldn't wait. But then your hero manager showed up, ready to protect his employees and show his Mr. Rice where he belongs. Your manager turned out to be not just an intimidating figure, but an unwavering defender. He told this villain exactly what he deserved, and even threatened to call the police or kick him out of the establishment. And this rude guy couldn't help himself and rolled racist language. But your manager didn't even give him a chance to finish his threat and send him away. And as a result, this whole scandal over fried rice resulted in this man's withdrawal and probably loss of appetite for a long time. I hope that entitled idiot never comes back. Your manager really deserves kudos for his defense and competence. The third story is, I turned in my resignation and was asked to immediately leave the building. I left this company a year ago, and in December my previous supervisor got promoted to operations manager. He called me and laid out a seriously good offer. If I were to go back on the production floor to help get them out of a mess and train people, I'm a specialized machinist, would get a pay raise, maximum 50 hour work week, voluntary after that, sign on bonus, four weeks of vacation, and an 18 to 24 months of promotion into program management. I was already on that path with another company. I accepted on the condition that I get it all in writing. I accepted, resigned from the other company I worked at, and went back to training people and making parts. I found out that the new supervisor was not privy to the conditions of my return. When I had put my foot down about 50 hour work weeks, he didn't like that I was allowed to pick when I worked extra and was very vocal about it. Six months goes by and I was under quite a bit of stress at home and was distracted. I ruined two parts within two weeks of each other and their estimate was it was a total of 14K lost. Manager also let me know I had made them 250K profits in six months. I knew I had messed up, but I also know that I could remake the parts in a few weeks. Next day, I get brought into HR. The supervisor had chosen to escalate past verbal and first written straight to second written warning for insubordination due to not following his order to have someone double check everything I do. I made a mistake at 5 a.m. and forgot to have anyone check me. I was then told that if I ruined any other parts in 90 days, I was terminated and that any other insubordination ever would be an instant termination. Along with that, they were going to remove my future promotion to program management due to not being a leader and working over 50 hours a week. I was angry, but refused to let them see it. That would truly be bad leadership. I also didn't remind them that two weeks beforehand I told them that I was approached by two other companies, and I turned them down. I had an interview scheduled before I left that day, and a job offer in program management for another company before the weekend. I was asked to immediately leave the building when I turned in my two-week notice. As I was leaving, I had three other co-workers come up to me and ask me to put in a word with the company I'm going to, because they don't agree with what they did to me. Huh, karma's a real bee. Your unfair dismissal eventually cost them three more employees. Now they'll have to find four new people instead of one. And they've essentially lost more because the 250k you were bringing in, they won't be getting anymore. Not anytime soon for sure. But it's what they deserve. Advice to all bosses with inflated ego and delusions of grandeur, you should keep your word that came on behalf of your company, or you will face unpleasant consequences. And good luck to you OP on your new job. Hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. Have a good day.